Well, good good evening, good afternoon for me. It's fun again to be with you guys. Um, I, I feel like I know you all now. <laughs> it's like fun, the, the, the pre-class chats are more fun than the class, I think. Um, I was just taking a view of the 20 meter band on my radio and a 20 meter antenna and noticing, and I'll pan again, almost all the activity right now Almost all the activity are uh, FT8. Is FT8? I guess it's singular. Here we go. So right in here, 14074. I turned the sound off. There's a few signals above. There's one lonely CW. Oh, maybe two. A little bit of CW at the very bottom of the band here. I don't know if the camera's fo refocusing here. And if I were to listen on uh, 15 meters, I don't know if it's open, I'd probably hear similar. So th the comment that I often get is, what do you think of FT8? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I, I used FT8 for quite a while, especially when it was kind of new. I'm trying to get the camera here so it doesn't fall off. Um, FT8, extremely efficient. I can adjust the camera here. There. Okay. Um, you know, you could work the world with a couple of watts and a simple wire antenna. And my contacts were always, oh, here's a call. Here's a RST, you know, a signal report and a grid. And thank you, 73, goodbye. <laughs> like, after 100 of those, I thought, well, my computer's locking a lot of context, but th this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> There's no challenge. It's too easy. So uh, I, I like to, if I'm going to spend time getting a contact, to really you know, learn something about the other person. So the sound card mode, some of them lend themselves to more casual discussions. PSK31 was very popular for, what, 20 years? RIDI, um, in America, I only hear RIDI when there's a RIDI contest. And then as soon as the ready contest ends, you know, 12 noon on Sunday or something, the band clears out and I don't hear any ready anymore. I could call oh, CQ yeah. on ready an hour after the contest ends and nobody responds. <laughs> so uh, ready seems to be the uh, contest mode of choice because it's real fast, easy to do. PSK 31, I don't hear it much anymore. I probably see more CW than PSK 31 on 20 meters, 40 meters. So last time we met, I talked a lot about how do you do sound card modes, and I talked about the sound cards themselves without you know opening them up, as an engineer might you know look at AD processors and stuff. But you know even simple sound cards work fine. Huh, here I've got one right here that I had on a couple of days ago. <laughs> you know a little sound card. <laughs> There's not much there. Um, it works on a lot of the simple modes. I don't need high fidelity sound cards to reproduce, you know, the Philharmonic. I'm just reproducing simple sounds that are uh, used to communicate on HF. Um, so we talked about the hardware and we talked about a little bit how you modulate a radio on single sideband, either AM, FM, or PM. And all of the modes use some combination of that. And I thought, well, you know, the one thing left is um, if you want to use digital modes for emergency purposes, how is that different from just chatting or contests or whatever? And of course, in an emergency, you want to have good accuracy, whatever you're sending. I don't want to have to say it phonetically, letter by letter, you know, that's too slow. Uh, and I wouldn't dream at my stage in life to send an emergency communication on CW with a hand key other than to say evacuate, 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 and that, that's all I would do. But uh, I'm not that good an operator on CW to have you know national traffic pass through my hands and brains. But uh, keyboard modes are pretty good. So I thought, let's take a look at two of the uh, dominant emergency communication. Um, I, I, they're not really modes, but uh, sort of like algorithms. Um, how is emergency communication handled now? either locally, regionally, within a couple hundred miles, 
uh, within a country or you know from country to country or across the world. How, do, how does that work out now? So HF bands are in flux because the solar cycle has just gone through its kind of minimum. But I'm looking at 20 meters. Um, you know, right now the sun is up. Nice warm summer day here in Pennsylvania. Um, I'll bet if I called CQ on FT8, I'd get stations all over the U.S. and probably still Europe and maybe even uh, to the west. Hawaii, you know, as long as two stations see the sun, 20 meters is usually pretty good. As soon as the sun goes down, 40 meters comes alive. And suddenly, instead of hearing stations a couple hundred miles, I can hear stations thousands of miles away at 40 meters at night. 80 meters, unpredictable. It's fickle 80 meters. So let's take a look. I'll do screw sh uh, sharing, and I'll show you what I've got on emergency communications. And then what I'd like to do is to actually do a live demonstration. I'm not sure if this will work on Zoom. I have two radios, two computers. One of them's on Zoom. And I'll see if I can transfer an emergency message on my Zoom machine here. And I'll show you the, the software. And send that emergency message about three feet to another radio. Well, actually, the antennas are out back. So I'll do a sample WinLink uh, communication. So let's go to screen share. Let me find what I want here. There we go. All right. Did that come up? Emergency communications yep. slideshow? Yep. All righty. So, MCOM. Uh, I don't know. I, I saw that slide and I thought, that's, that's sort of a fun slide. <laughs> it looks a lot like when I try to do emergency communications in my pickup truck. My antennas are all over the place. Then you get in a storm and you know my battery's dying and I'm thinking what can I do so here's a typical simple emergency communication setup that I have used here in uh, Chester County Pennsylvania Chester County complete WinLink and uh, FL Digi and uh, anything else so the radio is a little ICOM 706 <laughs> this thing is uh, about 15 years old maybe a little older it's uh, very small lightweight portable uh, it can put out close to 100 watts. The receiver is pretty good, not great, pretty good. Have two different filters in there, so it's still, you know, the old uh, pre-SDR, of course. Above it, a uh, Pactor TNC. It's called C-Wave here, because some other marine company uh, placed an order for a thousand of these or something. But it's a uh, SCS German Pactor TNC. Uh, it's about 15 years old. Over here, a little signal link. Very, very simple USB uh, sound card. Uh, left channel only, mono. <laughs> you don't need stereo. And a little antenna tuner, a little speaker. I'm not showing you the HF antenna tuner that's off the uh, slide. And here's a little uh, USB to serial port, COM port. So my computer can talk to the TNC through this. And I just have it hooked up here with some lights that I can tell if if something's going wrong, I can tell if the RTS, the DTR pin, if something's failing, I'll sort of know what's going wrong here. Um, none of this is very expensive. I mean, you know, as a used packed or TNC, maybe a couple hundred US dollars. Uh, this kind of a transceiver, well, when it was new, you know, maybe close to $1,000, but you can find these used now for about $300. Not a lot of money here. It's not a very fancy station. I could use this in an emergency communication. In fact, I do use it uh, with some sort of an antenna and contact people anywhere from 10, 20 miles away on two meters, 440, to a couple hundred miles away on 80 meters with a long wire, to on 20 meters, almost anywhere in the world if propagation's good. So a complete little uh, emergency communications setup. What I didn't show in the picture here is it all fits in one case. Except the battery. The battery is kind of a separate heavy battery. So the popular modes for emergency communications. I talked about this uh, was just last week. feels like a month ago. Uh, Thor and MFSK and Olivia, they're very popular on 40 meters, 80 meters. They're all uh, multiple tone modes, one tone at a time. So they all kind of sound alike. D -d 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 -d, like, a you know, three bassoons playing a... Uh, a melody, d d d d d d d d d d you know. Um, 
they transmit very easily on an HF single sideband radio. Um, they're produced by um, any simple sound card. You don't need anything exotic. MT63, uh, a much more complex sound. Uh, it's uh, 64 parallel signals, like 64 railroad tracks. And it takes up uh, anywhere from 500 hertz to 1,000 hertz to 2,000 hertz, depending on the mode you pick for MT63. Not much fun to listen to. It's, it's kind of a PSK style modulation, which is like four clarinets out of tune playing together. Um, 8 PSK, very popular now in the UHF, VHF bands, FM. Man, that's fast. Uh, you can get up to like 1,000 words a minute with uh, 8 PSK modes. A little rougher on a sound card, but they can do it. Uh, OFDM, uh, the new kid on the block, uh, that's what Vera is and some other techniques. Very clever programming. Uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplex. That's a mouthful, OFDM. Uh, Vera is kind of a unique mode uh, created by Jose in Spain and is gaining popularity because it works on any sound card and it's just, it's superb programming. And it's intelligent uh, software in that it has a bunch of different gears or speeds. And when you're communicating with someone else, if the listener says, ah, I didn't quite get that, slow down, then Vera slows down. Or if the listener says, oh, you got a really good signal, you can go faster. Vera goes faster. So it changes its speed on the run. Um, I've heard some CW contacts try to do that, and that doesn't work too well if you're not in agreement. Um, often a beginner might be sending CQ at like 5, 8, 10 words a minute. Then I hear an answer come back at like 13, 15 words a minute. Well, that's not fair. You know, you should answer someone's CQ at the speed they send it. Well, Vera can vary from uh, very slow to really, really fast. And Pactor. Pactor is the specialty. Don't hear Pactor that much anymore in the ham bands. Uh, it's very expensive to buy these TNCs, but it's it works really well. So they're the different modes. I didn't include CW here because no one in the right mind would use CW as an emergency communication mode. I mean, that's an absolute last resort because I can't copy more than about 20 words a minute. And even that, I wouldn't trust my CW copying. Um, sound cards can do it much more reliably. So let's think about this thing called Winlink. Have any of you operated Winlink before? I can't see everyone's face, but I see a few. Unmute, I just press the space bar and call out and say, yeah, I've operated Winlink, if you have. Nobody? No. Ah, okay. So my live demonstration will be kind of unique. <laughs> I hope it works. So Winlink, it's a uh, it's a handshaking mode. What do I mean by that? Uh, it's like when I start a conversation with Winlink, it says, "Hello there, uh, David uh, G8." I forget your call. <laughs> this is K3UI. I want. I have a message for you. Will you accept my invitation? And David comes back. And you know sounds and says yeah yeah I hear you I accept go ahead so the handshaking back and forth is two stations agreeing to link up it reminds me of middle school dances <laughs> so it's a, a link up now as soon as that happens I say to David okay I've got an email for you are you ready to accept my email to you and David comes back and says yeah go ahead send me an email now, at that point, we have to agree because we're on, a let's say, an HF band on some frequency and operating on sideband. We have to agree on the mode. The mode is not Winlink. Winlink is the mechanism. So the different modes <clears throat> that you can use are Pactor, Vera, RDOP, and an older one called Winmore. So let's say we're on Vera and we have to agree to do this or we wouldn't be able to talk to each other. Then we have to check if our VFOs are aligned, because chances are one of our VFOs doesn't agree with the other. So it's a really important for Vera to kind of link and sync up. Here I'm doing it in front of the camera. If we're a little bit off in frequency, this doesn't work. So that takes a little back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We call that handshaking. And then finally David says, yeah, okay, I'm ready. Send me your email, go ahead. 
So I start to send the email, but instead of sending the whole thing, I send it a little burst. So I send maybe uh, you know a couple hundred bytes, and then I say, David, did you get that? And David comes back and says, yeah, I don't mean says, I mean it was his keyboard. Vera says, yep, got it, give me the next one. So it goes back and forth, back and forth, and I don't send the next block until David, the information receiving station, the IRS, that's three interesting initials for Americans, <laughs> the IRS. That's the Revenue Service. They collect our money. So it goes back and forth until finally David says, yeah, I got the whole email. Thank you. And he sends a little message to me that says, do you have anything else for me? And I say, no, that was it. Do you have anything for me? And David said, yeah, yeah, I've got an email I want to send to you. Wait, don't, don't close up shop yet. Here comes my email to you. So it goes back and forth, back and forth. So uh, we call that a one-to-one -one link. Now, if um, I'm sending to David and David is what we call a gateway, that's something special. Because it means if David gets an email not addressed to him, he has the ability to put it into the internet and send it anywhere in the world, not necessarily by a ham radio channel. So what we call a gateway is a ham radio operator station that has um, internet capacity or can maybe move it to a different frequency on a ham band. So it works well as long as our link is maintained if we have propagation. On VHF, UHF, that's a lot different because that's short range, you know, 10, 20, 50 miles. And that's almost all uh, FM. And it can actually be on FM with a repeater, a voice repeater, or it can be on what's called a digipeter or maybe just simplex. So it works well as long as we agree, yeah, we hear each other, you know, we're ready to accept emails. So WinLink, it's basically um, connecting the internet to a ham radio channel. So if you look at the sessions over here on the right, it says packet WinLink. Well, packet's the mode. Telnet is another way of just saying the internet connection. Pactor, robust packet. I don't hear that anymore. Winmore, that's dying out, an old sound card. RDOP, that's actually dying out too. Vera, the new kid, um, and some other stuff. So a WinLink connection means I'm connected to a station that says, yeah, I've got internet capability. I'm a registered gateway. Sort of like saying, here I am, I hang out on this frequency. Come find me, give me a message. What if I just want to get a message to uh, David personally, it has nothing to do with the internet, and I just want to send him a message, an email. So then we would do it by what's referred to as P2P, peer to peer. We're two ham radio operators. I don't need the internet, he doesn't have the internet, fine, I'm just sending David an email, peer to peer. Or you can do it with radio only. There's a lot of variations here among the different WinLink uh, possibilities. Uh, so Vera, talk, talk more about that. A multi-carrier, that means like parallel stripes on the waterfall. And um, Vera can take up to two, two and a half kilohertz, and that's pretty wide. That's a lot wider than a ready signal. So now the question is, well, can these wind, uh, can these wind link stations coexist, let's say, with CW operators? Uh, good luck. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, man, this is like, you know, driving an 18-wheel truck and you come across, you know, a caravan of bicycles. What are you going to do? <laughs> you know. You don't want to knock the bicycles off the road, but you have to share somehow. So there's a lot of debate how hams can share the different modes within a given band, like 20 meters. Oh, I see. I'm looking at 20. Now there's four or five CW stations acting on uh, 20. All right. So the first thing you do if you want to play with WinLink, you got to register your call, uh, winlink.org. So you go to the Internet, get on winlink.org, and it says, okay. Tell me your call sign. You better be legitimate, right? So you give them your call sign. And it says, okay, so in case uh, you want to get back and change some things, uh, create a password. Say create a password. You create a password recovery. And in other words, you register with WinLink. You tell WinLink uh, who you are. I mean, I'm presuming you give a real name, a real address. And, uh, and a non-WinLink email in case you want to have your WinLink emails forwarded automatically to a non-WinLink email, like AOL, Gmail, whatever. So you can do it that way. So you register. Um, is there a cost? No. Um, 
but they continually bug you for donations. But no, there's no official cost to register. Have any of you registered with Winlink? Oh, yeah. Mike? Who? Who was that? Dave G A P G O. David. David. So you're registered with Winlink. How long did it take you to do that? Uh, not very long at all. Less than an hour. Less than half an hour. Okay, good. Uh, did you give them your real name and, and address? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. All right, so once you get it set up and you have your call registered with WinLink, that takes about an hour because you have to get through the, the system. Then you say, okay, so I want to use the, the mode called Vara, V-A-R-A. Okay, so you have to tell it, uh, well, I have this kind of computer. How does Vara talk to my computer? How does it talk to WinLink? So there's a bunch of numbers and commands and ports you fill in. Mostly I just click on the default ones and it worked. I didn't have to look this up anywhere. But session bandwidth is important because now it's going to ask you. I can't click live here because this is just a slide. When you go to session bandwidth, it says, oh, you have three or four choices. We're on HF, let's say, single sideband. Uh, 500 hertz or less. Now, a lot of people choose that because they don't want to be greedy. 500 hertz, it's just a little wider than a RIDI signal. How about 2300 hertz? Well, that's pretty greedy for a digital signal. Uh, but that, that's almost as wide as what a typical phone conversation and there's one a little larger that's 2750 I've never done that that would be really greedy on 20 or 40 meters and then it says okay to get on Vera you have to download what's called the Vera modem not RMS Express the Vera modem where do you get that oh you get that on EA5 HVK Jose's webpage and you can get it for free it'll work but it will only do the really slow speed modes as a demonstration, but you can show that it works. And after you've used it and played with it for a while and you think, oh, I really like this, I want to get the high speed version, then you pay. And I think the site license is about $70 American. So it's like purchasing any software. It's good for your call on any computer. Uh, so you can use it on more than one computer. So once you click update, and you've downloaded Vera, then you only have a few more things to do. You have to tell Vera, well, what kind of radio do I have? Because Vera would like to talk right to your radio through Winlink Express. You don't have to do that, but a lot of people like to. Uh, it's sometimes called rig control, or some people call it CAT, Computer Assisted Transceive. It's a Yezu term. So select radio model. So I, I, so I tell Vera, okay, I have an ICOM radio. Um, you might even give it the model number. ICOM wants to know just one thing. What's its address? <laughs> what's its address? Because the way ICOM communicates the radios, each has a specific address. So my particular radio is 98 hex. So I have to say 98. And I want to pick the mode on this radio called USB digital. So depending on what radio you have, you have to kind of set it up correctly. It says, okay, if uh, Veras and RMS Express is going to talk to your radio, how do we do that? Well, I have a COM port. So it says, all right, tell me your COM port. Tell me the BOD, the speed at which the communication takes place. And if you're on a Yezu or a Kenwood radio, it wants to be able to use some of these extra pins on a COM port for what they call flow control, handshaking. Uh, ICOM doesn't need this. So ICOM's the simplest kind of uh, cat control. If you want to do even something else for a push to talk, tell your radio when to transmit, you can assign a different COM port or uh, box or almost anything. So you have some flexibility in how you set it up. Almost everyone sets it up, tries it, and it doesn't work. And you think, wow, why didn't it work? Well, you got the wrong COM port, the wrong speed. You need to check, yeah, I need RTS. Whatever it is, you figure it out. Uh, but I think all of us who do this for the first time get a little frustrated. Oh, it didn't work. And you find out why and you correct it. And then it works, you think. Oh, yeah, rookie error, rookie error. Okay, then it wants to know, well, do you have a sound card? <laughs> better. This needs a sound card. Where is it? What's it called? So, uh, you know, the default might be a microphone sound card in your computer. Almost none of us do that because we like to have separate sound cards for ham radio compared to the sound built into maybe your laptop or your desktop computer. You don't want to be operating in digital mode and have suddenly have on the air, you've got mail. <laughs> that would be awful. Rookie Air 22. 
So you tell it your input, your output. You tell it how you're going to do PTT, a COM port, a CAT port, you know, something, or a VOX. And you press tune, and nothing happens. You think, oh, bummer, now what? So you go back, and you check, and you find another error or two. Finally, you press tune, and your radio goes on the air, and you hear a bzzz, you know, at some VFO frequency. You think, got it, got it, got it. So you're getting there. You're almost there. So I think, okay, I want to try this out. So I get on uh, Winlink, and I try to connect to a gateway. So I look up Vera HF Winlink. I click on that. I say, okay, I want to create a message, type out a message. Who am I going to send it to? Well, i got to figure that out. So all of this is kind of nerve-wracking the first time you do it, but it's like acting in a play or almost anything else. So I say, all right, I'm going to create a new message, and I'm going to send it to a WinLink gateway, WinLink message. That just means it's a message intended to go out on the Internet somewhere, but I'm going to get to the Internet through, well, who? In this case, NY3J. He's a neighbor of mine. And I'm going to copy the message back to me if this works. So I'm going to send uh, 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 an email. I'm going to say, okay, test. This is an American Red Cross daily shelter report. And I actually have this set up on one of my radios. And before I close today, tonight, uh, I'll try to actually send this. So this is a drill, blah, blah, blah. So I fill out some message. Okay. So it's looking better and better. Uh, after I create the message, I have to press post to outbox. What does that mean? Post to outbox means I put it back in the RMS Express window that says, this is what I want to send. Now it's just like any, you know, um, mail server. You know, it, it's just in the, in the port ready to go out. If I have an attachment, I click here, attach, and I can attach an American Red Cross form, a PDF, a picture, anything, just any anything I want to attach. Mm -hmm. WinLink doesn't appreciate if you send huge files, like 100 kilobyte files on 20 meters, because it might take a half hour, and that's a lot of valuable real estate for sending a picture of yourself, you know, across town. So there's a little, uh, what's that word? Uh, I was thinking prudence, that's not quite right. Uh, there's a little uh, common sense don't send huge files when you don't have to just for practice. So here's some Red Cross uh, templates. We've been practicing with these in the Philadelphia area. If I click on Template Manager, WinLink has about 100 forms it already knows. And it has it when you download WinLink. So they're American Red Cross, ARC, uh, Canada, uh, Canadian, uh, California, FEMA. All of these are unique forms that someone's already created. Severe weather forms, hurricane, local weather, so forth. So, or I can create my own, anything I want. As long as wherever I'm sending it, they have the same forms. That's important. So here's what a typical American Red Cross daily shelter report uh, looks like. And we use these all the time when we open shelters in, in my county. So the daily shelter report is created by the American Red Cross. And it already has all these slots, and you fill out the data. So actually, when I send this, I'm not sending the whole form. That could take an hour. I'm just saying American Red Cross form, daily shelter report. Here's the data. I just send the data. And at the other end, they see, oh, it's an American shelter report, uh, daily report, and here's the data. So the guy at the other end gets the data, opens up the shelter report, puts the two together, and boom, there it is. So we're not sending all these long forms. We're just sending the data to fill in the form. Very clever. American Red Cross standard form shelter report is a very easy thing to use. Um, someone said, is this encrypted? No, we're not allowed as hams to do that, right? So we're not sending uh, encrypted information on a ham radio band. Uh, here's the severe weather report. Again, uh, you know, someone made up the form. It got modified. so. You know, sending to, from, what are the, you know, so I've got another severe weather report I could send, an actual one. Or I could send something as a PDF file, but if you do that, it makes the, the form very large and it takes longer to send a PDF file. But if the other person didn't have one of these weather reports, I could just send it as a PDF, in which case when they print it, it prints the whole thing. And then finally, I post it to the outbox, meaning I'm ready to send it. 
Let me stop and ask if there are any questions so far. This is how WinLink works. I have to find someone I want to send it to somehow, or maybe I have a list of people that I know are you know listening on this frequency, uh, and hope they're listening and call them on a certain frequency. They don't own the frequency, so it might be a frequency we share. Questions? So you're getting the gist of how this works. I'll keep going if there are no questions. All right, so how do we find a station? Well, <laughs> that's part of the problem, isn't it? Uh, let's say I know a certain person is a gateway because he's registered as such, and he sits his radio on a certain frequency all day, 24 hours a day, just listening. So I know if the conditions are right, I can send him a request to link on his frequency or where his receiver is sitting. So that's the way this starts. I've got to find a gateway. Well, you know, on 20 meters, that could be 1,000 miles away. On 2 meters, that might be 10 miles away. So I've got to be careful based on the where I want the message to go, who I might connect to. So you make the connection first. You get a link. You start handshaking. Hello, hello, K3EUI, G8, blah, blah, blah. Someone's the sending station, someone's the receiving station. As soon as both of us agree, we're good. Good signals, good report, propagation's good. Send the message, send the email, then we go. So let's say I want to send a message on a uh, HF single sideband radio. So I go to Winlick and I say, okay, uh, update the list of gateways that I think I could reach from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA, North America. So it says, yeah, okay, this time of day, these are the different stations you can reach. A lot of them are on 80 meters here, 75, 80 meters. Why? Oh, because if I want to connect to someone within a couple hundred miles, that's a good band for this time of day. Reliability, oh, 80, 90%, that's pretty good. But as I go to 40 meters, look at this, WD10, uh, 7104. Vera, 2300 wide, it's public, meaning anyone can connect to them, 336 kilometers, bearing of 212, chances are 81%. That's pretty good. So you can see, well, I'm wrong column here. So as I slide down, I get stations that are less likely going to get a good connect. Well, it depends on what, the solar cycle, time of day. So what you can do is keep updating this list at least once a day maybe even more often than that. So I pick someone who I think might work, I click on it, my radio goes to that frequency automatically, and I click the button that says start, and I start calling them, and I wait, keep my fingers crossed. How about Pactor? Well, different stations operate Pactor, so if I'm operating Pactor, there's a whole other list of stations that sit on a Pactor TNC. Uh, and again, look at the frequencies, 80 meters, 40 meters, this one's on 20 meters, Oh, he's only 12 kilometers from me, so I could almost open my window and, you know, and shout to him. So as you get farther and farther away, the band shift from 40 meters, 40 meters. And you look at this one, 1845, 160 meters, 460 kilometers. I don't think so, but uh, that's what the software is telling me. So Pactor has another set of stations. Uh, often Vera stations aren't the same as Pactor. They just differ. What if I want to stay local? Two meter packet. Oh, there's a lot of packets still in America. So on packet, two meters is good for 20, 30 miles, something like that. So here's a bunch of uh, stations that operate on a packet frequency. Again, they don't own the frequency, but their receiver sits here waiting for a call. So there's a couple of popular frequencies, 14501, 14507. You don't want to pick a frequency that's near the satellite downlink. That would be awful. And you don't want to pick a frequency where there's a two meter repeater. That would be even worse. Packet. And then here's FM Vera. Vera is very different from Packet and a different set of stations. Now I see there's some on 440 as well. Two meters, 440, a lot of two meters, 440. How far, distance? Yeah, up to 100 kilometers, maybe. Depends on propagation, right? So Pactor and Vera are sort of like, uh, well, they're not warring tribes, but they don't talk to each other. 
the Pactor folks are really dedicated. Uh, a lot of sailors love Pactor because you can be in your boat out at sea and get email. Uh, and Vera is kind of the new kid on the block, but Vera is inexpensive. So I'll predict in the next five years, Vera will be taking over Pactor just because it's, uh, you can do it with any sound card. So a very simple uh, Pactor hardware, TNC, terminal node controller, TNC, back in the 90s, an AEA, PK-232. My son had one of these. He loved it because all these lights were lighting up as he's talking. Uh, so this uses uh, the hardware inside here to communicate by Pactor or Amptor. Someone mentioned Amptor. This will do Amptor. Uh, even RIDI and even CW. Uh, this is a more modern Pactor TNC. Uh, something like uh, 10, 15 years ago, perhaps. Pactor 2, the professional model. This is fun. I have one of these, and the lights light up, and this gives you instructions. But it's sort of like an automatic car. It does the driving for you. Once I say I want to connect, it, it does it all kind of automatically. A more modern Pactor TNC. It's getting a little brief here, right? It's also <laughs> getting more expensive. So this does all the communicating for you, which means what? Uh, it costs more. Pactor 3. Uh, these TNCs are a couple thousand dollars, American. Here's the Pactor speeds. So di six different speeds, six gears. And the number of tones goes up. The uh, modulation technology gets more complicated. Anyway, faster speeds. It's just like a 10-speed bicycle there changes the speed if it needs to to slow down or speed up. So Pactor 3 is intelligent. It can change speed on the fly. Here's what the spectrum looks like. Nice and clean, sharp sides. You can see here that it's, what, 400 to 2600? So yeah, about 2.2 kilohertz wide. 18 carriers mean there's 18 little points of light here. So each one is a unique uh, signal. Pactor 4, I, I've never seen one of these live because it's not legal yet in America. Uh, it goes up to 1,800 baud, and the uh, U.S. Uh, Federal Communication Commission says we can't do that. <laughs> We're stuck with 300 baud, uh, 300 information changes per second. So this thing is really lightning fast, and people use it all over the world, but not in America. And you can see in the back how it connects to your radio, connects to your computer, USB connection. You can use it over a network, speaker and microphone. So it's a very sophisticated gadget. It works really well. Pactor. And the Pactor 4 speeds go from very, very slow, two-tone, this is like ready, to really super fast. Uh, so what's the difference here? The quality of the path. If you have better signal to noise, you can go higher speed. You know, say as you approach a hill on a bicycle, you know, gear down, go slower. So here's, I forget the time of day, I just uh, got on the internet and said, show me the active pack tour stations right now uh, on, maybe it was 20 meters. And I don't see the uh, sunlight here, but it looks like this is sunlight in here because a lot of pack tour stations in North America, only a couple in South America, only one or two in all of Africa, that's not very good, and a lot in Europe, in Northern Europe, Russia, couple in Australia. So at the moment on the internet, these Pactor stations are registered and they're saying, yeah, we're open. We're open for business. Uh, it doesn't mean I've contacted any one of them. It just says they're available. Looks like propagation is okay to their locations. Uh, Vera is a sound card mode and therefore the software is really fun to play with. <laughs> and I'm still enjoying and learning from it. It's like getting a uh, a new musical instrument with no instructions and you sort of blow into it and you push some vowels on a trumpet and you can play different things. That's the way a lot of us have learned how to operate Vera without, quote, reading the manual. It means we can also get in trouble. So I'll show you some of these live slides and what they all mean. But uh, any simple sound card will work. You don't need something very sophisticated. The very user interface, really cool. It gives you speedometers that show signal strength how much your CPU is being stressed, uh, automatic frequency control if that's active, and the signal to noise. And up here it shows the speed at which you're sending or receiving data. So a lot of fun. I'll show you this live if it will work. Uh, Vera on HF, here's our two levels. The wideband, 2300 hertz, 
has 16 different gears, different speeds. Uh, level one is really slow. That's like me sending CW here. FSK, D, 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 D. Uh, symbol rate, 23. That's, you know, D, 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 D. That's pretty slow. So a net rate of 18 bits per second, BPS. That's bits per second. Uh, that's really slow. So that's, you know, very rugged when conditions are, oh, I can't hear you, a lot of noise. And as you get better and better signals, less noise, it goes up until you got to 32 qualm. That, that's a crazy mode. Uh, quadrature, amplitude, modulation, uh, really complex structure here. If you say, all right, I want to use Vera, but let's just stay with 500 hertz. I don't want to be greedy. I want to be a good neighbor. 500 hertz. Then you have fewer uh, carriers and closer spacing and it's not that slow 1500 bits per second is pretty darn fast but it won't take up more than 500 hertz so it's like you know one and a half ready stations not too greedy vera fm that's different on two meters we have more space right more bandwidth so vera wide wide means in this case up to six kilohertz it's like yikes that is wide uh, a lot of sound cards won't work well at that kind of a wide uh, propagation. Uh, so the Vera Wide needs what used to be called 9600 baud packet technology. It's not that we're sending packet anymore, but we just call it the 9600 port, meaning uh, a port that can carry up to 6 kilohertz on an FM band, 2 meters. Now that won't also fit through a repeater, so this is simplex. Or if you choose narrow, narrow can go over most repeaters, 2 kilohertz or so. So uh, if you have the repeater owner's permission, you could play with Vera FM via an ordinary voice repeater. And you can see, again, the different speeds here. Up to, well, 12,000 bits per second. That's very fast. And up to here, Vera wide, 25,000. So the difference is just the bandwidth allows you to do what more carriers. 58 tanks versus 116 tanks. You get the idea. So here's what the Vera window looks like. Oh, man, it's fun to watch this in action. So on the left, you get a graph, and this evolves with each frame you send, each bit of it, information. BPS is bits per second, not bytes, bits per second, up to, you know, 14,000. That's fast. And every time you get an acknowledgment, you get another bar. If the sending person says, nope, I didn't get that at all, then you get no bar, <laughs> then it skips one, and that happens. This is what it looks like in terms of like a uh, constellation of tones. Um, this is pretty complicated. means your signal has a combination of uh, phase modulation and amplitude modulation. And depending on the phase and the amplitude, your sound card has to separate this out. So every time you make a tone, it's got to fit in one of these boxes. So if I look at this and there aren't any, are not any tones straggling a box, it means that's good. The software knows what you're sending. No errors. Uh, and this one looks really, really good. Well, it's a sample receive window from my computer. So I was connected, K3EUI, connected to K3EUI. Sounds like incest. Two radios. My two radios are right here. They're only a couple feet apart. I wondered, is that legal? I think it is. It's K3EUI and communication to K3EUI. I was on a two-meter simplex frequency. Had both radios turned to minimum power, like one watt. So uh, I got really good throughput from one radio to another with uh, simplex. The TX delay is the time between when I send a burst of information and I get an acknowledgement from the receiving station that says, yep, I got it, or nope, didn't get it, send it again. 170 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. That's pretty fast. So it sounds like bzzz, 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 bzzz. You know, that's about how fast the data goes. All righty. So I practiced. I sent a 55 kilobyte file. It was actually a, uh, a picture I took myself of a solar eclipse here a couple summers ago. So a nice, beautiful JPEG image. 55 kilobytes isn't too big. So I sent this on FM, two meters, simplex, me to me, my radio to my radio. And the whole thing took, if I look down here, uh, 23 seconds. <laughs> That's short. So that's about 140 kilobytes per minute, KB per minute. That's fast. Uh, now that's because I only sent it, you know, a couple of feet. 
two meter FM simplex. Uh, I'm not going to bother anybody, so I was just sending two radios. So let me stop, and I'm going to start talk about FL Digi. But let me stop and ask if there are any questions about Winlink. So you get the idea. Winlink's a mechanism by which, through some mode, you can make a link to another ham radio station, either a gateway having a computer access, internet access, or just another mortal ham somewhere in the world, and we just talk to each other and exchange emails. But it's basically an email exchange system. I can have in the email an attachment of anything, you know, a photo, a chess game, any, you know, just not business related. Okay? I'm looking at the time. I'm taking way too much time here. So FL Digi, completely different. FL Digi is not a linked mechanism. I can transmit FL Digi from 1 to 100 all at the same time. It's like if I listen right now on 20 meters to a CW station sending in English, I can eavesdrop and tell you what they're sending to each other. FL Digi is like that. There's nothing encrypted, and it's not a linked mechanism. It's just one to many. So we use it when we have information, let's say, from a central government, Pennsylvania governor, wants to send it out to 50 counties at once. That's how we would use this. There's no linking of the data. Oh, and it's also called Narrow Bandwidth Emergency Messaging System, NBEMS. So these two are kind of synonymous. So you can look at this and get more details at w1hkj.com. That's his call. Dave Fries, he and I are good friends at this point. It's free. Works on Windows, Linux, Macs. It's free. <laughs> it's updated every day. Uh, it's really good for just casual conversations. You can operate CW, PSK, uh, RIDI, or the MCOM modes. Uh, it doesn't take much memory. Uh, I've got it working behind me on an old Windows 7 computer. What it does not do, doesn't do packet, doesn't do Pactor, doesn't do any of the JT modes. They're specialized. So there's a couple of components. FL Digi is the main program. FL Message is just like WinLink. I can send pre-formatted messages out as emergency communications. FLAMP means I can send a message in small blocks. It's getting to look more and more like WinLink. So I can take a 100 kilobyte file and send it block by block in 5 kilobytes. And if someone says, yeah, I got that one, send the next block. Got that one, send in the next block. No, 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 I missed that. Send that one again. So FLAMP can work back and forth with uh, breaking up big files into small files. FL Rig, if you want, controls your radio. FL Log does logging. So the important thing, files are what's called wrapped. Uh, say I write a letter to David, and I put it in an envelope, and I seal it, and I say, okay, I'm going to mail it to David. But David, when you get this, you have to know the secret code to open it up. What's the secret code? Now, when I'm talking to David on the air, I send that secret code. So if David has the right, what's called checksum, then his computer can open this up and look at it. If not, a message pops up on David's computer. It says, nope, 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 checksum error. Bad file, bad file. Send it again. <laughs> so I got to send it all again. So it's sort of a way of saying you don't want to open a bad file, especially if it's emergency communication. Evacuate, don't evacuate. You don't want to mix those up. But it can send uh, pre-formatted messages just like uh, WinLink, weather reports, American Red Cross, the ICS, emergencies, any spreadsheet, radiograms, local weather, anything you want. FL message just takes a message, puts it in an envelope, and puts a code on it. So let's take a look. Here's a simple uh, severe weather report. Looks like this. Again, when I send it, I don't send the whole form. I just send the data in the form. But I send to David, hey, open your severe weather report. Here's some data. I send the data. He gets it, puts it in his form. It opens up. He can print it. So all kinds of things you might want to know about severe weather. You know, clouds, funnels, floods. You know, someone made up the form here. Severe weather. Emergency messages. Standard ICS forms in America. Uh, here I'm sending a shelter report from Westchester University, blah, blah, blah. So these are just sample pre-formatted uh, messages. Any kind of spreadsheet. So here I have a spreadsheet with all the repeaters in the Philadelphia area that you can use for emergency purposes, a CSV file. 
American Red Cross custom forms, they're the same forms that are in WinLink. Uh, flamp, break up a file into smaller pieces if it's a big file. I'm going faster because I'm watching the time and I want to do this live for you. So Flamp breaks up a file into blocks or little chunks, little envelopes. So here I can use a form um, called a, uh, a just a simple text file, txt file. It's uh, over three kilobytes. That's pretty big. It's a bunch of pages here. I can send that 11 seconds. Man, I can't read that fast. I can send this entire file using the mode called 8PSK1200F. That's the mode. It's like CW, RIDI, 8PSK. The file has 19 blocks. If you get it all, it'll open, and it should only take 11 seconds to send it. If you didn't, if you didn't get it, which blocks are you missing? Maybe you missed block 12. I'll just send block 12 again. So it's a very efficient way of getting a lot of information from one person to a receiving station. Rich text format files. Um, any kind of an email you could send. So we practice this um, in America on uh, what we call the Pennsylvania NBEMS net. And I just happen to be, at this point, the net manager. It meets Sunday mornings. Why Sunday mornings? Well, because Sunday early in the morning, a lot of us are available. We have time. Propagation's great in the morning for a couple hundred miles. I'm not trying to get a message across, you know, a thousand miles. So we pick a frequency, 3583, our net frequency. We pick a mode, Thor 22, D D D D D D D D, and we experiment with different modes for traffic. All of this goes by SkyWave, but the SkyWave in the early morning is just straight up, straight down. So we have a zone within about 300 miles of Philadelphia that 100%, I'm sure, every every Sunday morning at this time. I mean, unless there's a lightning storm, I'll get stations. I can hear stations within the 300 miles. And my antenna is a 100-foot long wire thrown at a tree. Nothing special. I don't need a tower with a beam for this. Um, all right, so here's our map of Pennsylvania. And this was taken about a year or two ago. All these tags and all these calls are stations that have checked in to the uh, Pennsylvania NBEMS net on 80 meters in the past year. So you can see there's a lot of stations on the southeast coast of Pennsylvania. That's Philadelphia and up here New York. And less so up here in the mountain area. And here's Lake Erie. Here's Pittsburgh out here. So, you know, uh, parts of the state have no one uh, that regularly checks into our net. And actually, they probably have fewer hams anyway. Other regional nets, uh, there's one in New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire. There's one on 20 meters that covers all of the U.S. I don't know if there are emergency uh, nets that are part of the European uh, or, uh, you know, the British uh, system. But 80 meters is really good in the mornings, less so at night, because at night you can hear stations 1,000 miles away. At night I hear lightning strikes that are thousands of miles. But uh, 80 meters, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, it's just our local friendly group, so it's pretty good. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing here. The next thing I was going to do is show you live, but let me stop and ask because it's been an hour. Questions, comments, did I go too fast, too far, too high, too low? <laughs> what? No, absolutely, absolutely perfect. The emergency communication needs are very specialized. You want to get information from A to B, and you want to be sure it's the correct information, so you don't want to make mistakes. I still have to see if my WinLink still works. It was while I was playing about with a Raspberry Pi and doing a build on it, uh, and it used some of the bits that you've been talking about, including WinLink. But I've never actually used it like anything else, uh, when we started in my region to play with WinLink, uh, we were all falling off our bicycle. <laughs> we were all making errors, mistakes, uh, especially on two meters where you know we were only listening to each other and trying things. Um, I would say with WinLink and with FLDigi, there's like 50 things you have to do in a row. 
to get it right. Any one or two of which, if they're set up wrong, complete failure. It's easy to strike out <laughs> by having a couple wrong settings. Your push to talk is wrong. You forgot the cat port number. You got the wrong baud rate. Uh, just on and on and on. It's not like picking up a microphone saying, hello, CQ. And it's definitely not like a key tapping out CQ, CQ. Um, the sound card modes are just more, they're trickier. It's not that they're technically more challenging. They're really not. But the, the operator has to have all the ducks lined up, kind of. That's an American expression, I guess. Any, any one mistake causes the cascade failure. <laughs> then you're all embarrassed because, oh, no, I couldn't get it to transmit. Uh, on HF, uh, well, you know, the worst thing you do is you land on someone's frequency and, you know, they already have a contact there or you're interfering with a net and they say, you know, move off. You got, you know. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is. Uh, after you practice and you get used to it and you realize how your computer talks to the radio and, you know, black and black, you get better at it as, as or, or more confident with it. Ah, it's like anything else in life, right? Questions, comments? Should I do a live demo? <laughs> Sandra saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I've got here. So here's one laptop set up with Vera. You see those windows. And I've preloaded this with two emergency messages in my outbox. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not quite. The outbox there has two messages lined up. Here's my Vera window that once I get this going, the speedometers are going to get going. And this is going to show me down here if my message was sent three feet away to this radio. So, oh, here's my one radio, my transmitting radio. And see, I'm on 14569. I'm using a, a simple signal link. Uh, my Pactor TNC is not working. It's not connected. So it's sending from this radio out my cables to an antenna over to this radio. <laughs> Real DX, three feet. Notice the frequency. Oh, 14569, so I'm good. This is a nice little 15-year-old radio, a little Kenwood radio. And that's connected to a sound card that's up here. It looks sort of like this sound card. And that's connected to my desktop that I'm using right now although yeah so so you get the idea now this is the part I'm not sure if it's gonna work so I wanna say share screen and share with you my live Vera Windows <laughs> See, I'm not sure I can do this on zoom so I'm gonna go share screen Oh, I have to say stop share first. Okay. And I want to share just my Vera. Just this. How do I get this off? Let me close this or just minimize it. Yeah, okay. Did that work? Do you see now my Vera window? Yep. Oh, good. I'm not sure if I put two or three of these up. You'll see them all. So let me try this. On my other laptop, I'm going to say, I want to make a connect. It's sort of like saying, K3EUI, I want to talk to you. But I'm K3EUI, so I'm like communicating to myself. So I'm going to say, start a conversation, but I'm going to turn up the sound. So you can hear the sound through my Zoom mic, right? Here's the trick. I want to get my radio sound into this. So I'm going to turn up the sound. I'm just going to press Tune and see if you hear the steady sound. If you do, then I think this was gonna work. 
Can you hear that? Let me turn up the sound a little. Can you hear that through my Zoom microphone? Can you hear that, Bobby? Say that again. I hear you. Okay. So that's the tune signal. Let me turn that off. Now I'm going to go to my computer here, attached to the Kenwood radio, go to settings, sound card. Can you see this where I am? And say tune here and see if you hear my other radio speaker. Yeah. So you can hear both sides of the conversation. So it's going to work. So I'm going to send myself two emails. Yeah. And they're both going to be uh, attachments. One is a severe weather report, and the other is a shelter report, just to make up two things. So let's do it, and you can hear both sides of the conversation. Then if I'm successful in getting it, I'll open it, and you can see it here. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> All right. So here's my connect requests. Doesn't that sound awful? <laughs> now look what's happening. I've already connected K3EUI to K3EUI. Here comes the data. 22,000 bits per second. Whoa, look at this. What happened? It said disconnected. I'm not sure why. But you saw basically how I did it. Let me see if I got anything. I don't think I actually got the uh, transmission here. My inbox, no, my inbox is empty. So let me try it again. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, my outbox is empty. I've got to make a, get a message back here. So let me try this again. Move to Outbox. Oh, I know what happened. Oh, very clever. The software outsmarted me. I tried this about two hours ago to see if it would work. And in my inbox, I already got this message. So I don't need to get it again. <laughs> it's, it outsmarted me. So I think what I need to do here is uh, saved items and delete them all. Just delete everything. So it doesn't know it already received this message. Boy, that was interesting. And under sent messages, delete everything. See, I tried to send myself a message that my computer already got. So it said, why waste time? Come on, wake up. So I think red items. Oh, I want to delete the red items. That's what I really want to delete. So I have to try this again. All right. So now if I look at my, I don't know, can you see this window that says inbox? Let me do stop share and reshare because I'll show you what I did. I think I'm only sharing one at a time. Yes, this is the one. So what I did is go, do you see this one I'm pointing to? Do you, do you guys see this? Yeah. Windlink Express. Okay. So I went to uh, Inbox and I deleted them all. So Outbox says what I want to send, K3EY to K3I. So I want to send to my other radio a severe weather report. But right now, I don't have anything in my Inbox. Okay. So I want to stop share and say, okay, so this computer <laughs> that I'm talking to, the Zoom, is totally dumb now. It doesn't have anything. But I want to share with you my speedometer window. Okay. So you're back to seeing my speedometer window? Yeah. Okay, good. So now I want to go over here and send those same two messages again. Sounds good. 
You can hear how fast this is going back and forth. Signal to noise, 27, 30 dB. <laughs> Whoa, that's fast. 22,000 bits per second. Disconnected. <laughs> it's, it's outsmarting me. Anyway, you get the idea. It's very fast when it works. Let me try it the reverse. Let me see. I have to stop share. Let me try to send a message from this computer to the other one. I didn't try it in that direction. All right, so let's try this way. Oh, I don't know if I could have two windows open. That would be the best if I can do that. I don't know if it'll let me do that. All right, well, let me just try. I'll start from this computer and try to talk to the other computer. So I want to talk to K3EUI, the frequency doesn't matter. The shared window is closed. Screen share. So I have one thing in my outbox, you guys see that? Severe weather report. Okay. So I want to stop sharing here and share my send window, a little different. Here's my send window. So I want to send direct to K3AUI. Plus start. Let's see if this will work. Yep. Connected peer-to-peer, K3AUI. So I'm sending myself a message, a severe weather report. Sent the message. That worked. Now, I can't show you what the other screen says because <laughs> I can't zoom over there now. But that did work. So I was able to send a severe weather report. What would that look like? Well, let me go to the outbox sent file, sent, and I'll open. This is what I sent. I want to look at the... Uh, it's not wanting to let me do this either. All right, so it's not quite doing what I thought. But you get the idea. Um, I could send forms from one radio to another. The fact that the two radios are only three feet apart doesn't make any difference, except I get great signal-to-noise ratio. The two antennas out back are about 30 feet apart. I really worried that I'd hurt one radio by having too much power go in the other one, but it seems one watt is, is okay. So my live demonstration wasn't quite 100% there, but you get the idea. So, <laughs> maybe I can create, so if I want to do a new message, I don't know if you see this window again, I'm, see, I'm not sure what you see. So if I go to uh, message, new message, did this open up? I want to send myself a message peer-to-peer to, -peer to K3EUI. And I want to select a template. And I want to select, let's say, an America. no, let's say a weather report. Severe weather report. Ah, and here it popped up. Did you see this? Do you see this now, severe weather report? Yeah. Oh, okay. So here you go. Load severe weather report data, and I just did this, severe weather. I saved it. So, okay. So all the numbers get filled in. Here, let me make it bigger, and you can see it. 
So severe weather report. Now, I didn't make up the form. The American Red Cross or Winlink already had this form. But this is kind of a standard acceptable severe weather report. The sender, the receiver, the date, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then, so what is the severe weather? Is it a flood? Yeah. Uh, rivers are out of the banks. You know, whatever it is, you click on it. Or is there any hail? Yes. Three inch teacup size hail. Ouch. <laughs> Is there a wind speed that you're worried about? Yeah, 80, 90 miles an hour. Are there any tornadoes, twos? Yes, tornadoes are seen, you know, so I click on sort of all of these that apply and I come down here and finally say, uh, save the weather form in case I lose it, save it and then submit it. So I'm gonna say submit and it says, all right, let's submit it to a template that's already made by Winlink. I say, okay. And then what it does over on another window is saves right here. Here, here we go. It saves this as the data, all this, the data for a severe weather report. I address it. Um, so in other words, all I'm sending is the data for a pre-existing form. I then post it to the outbox. The outbox is where I want to send things. Then I just lost it here. Where's my outbox? Okay, here's my outbox. Do you see all this now? Yep. The outbox? Is it still live? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So in other words, I, I'm sort of clicking and I'm not sure what is picking up on Zoom. So basically I create a, an emergency form. I put it into a format, I save it. Then the tricky thing is I got a connection. I have to get a connection to another ham radio operator somewhere in the world by a Winlink mode, Vera, Pactor. See, Winlink won't go by, let's say, CW. Uh, no one in their right mind would send an emergency message uh, with Winlink with the mode called CW. It's just too risky. Um, so stop share. I better stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> So you get a sort of a glimpse of how it's done. Uh, I got a B minus on that one. <laughs> with the wind link, with the, sorry, doubled. With the wind link, uh, Barry, it looks to me as though if you've got your thing set up, uh, you need to leave it and uh, have a separate setup for it. Because if you like a lot of people, you set up for that and then you go on and have a chat to somebody on to say, uh, then you've got to set it all up again. To, yes. Because uh, you, you lose your settings on the, on the side card and things like that. Um, if I wanted to set up Winlink and try to make it connect and at the same time talk to someone else on a different radio, on a different band, I would do it on a different computer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we're sending emergency messages really during a drill or an emergency, I, I would keep my attention focused on that one screen, that one computer, the one radio. Uh, Winlink tells me if it sent it and if the other person received it. I can click, uh, send me a, a, you know, you got it. Uh, you know, like a posted that says, yeah, your postage was delivered. Of course, if the propagation isn't good, I'm stuck. I got to find some band, some mode that will work. And what, I can what, keep trying. What, what was the system you using, Barry? What's it called? Aid or, Aid or something? RMS I've, I've forgotten it already. RMS Express. We ah, just call it Winlink. No, no, that wasn't the one I wanted. The, uh, um, I can't remember the name of it already. <laughs> The mode was called Vera, V-A-R-A. -R. Vera, Vera, that's it. I wanted to know -R -R. that because I'd forgotten it already. Yeah, just Google V-A-R-A -R -R and it'll take it to all kinds of good information about what it is. That's the mode. I'm not sure what the name means. Uh, the fellow who writes it is from Spain. I've sent him a lot of emails and he writes back in English. It's a little, little broken, but I mean, we can communicate back and forth. Um, It gets updated based on what folks say who use it. You know, I like this, I don't like that. This is easy, this is hard. So it's up to version four point something. 
it's not a chat mode it's not that it's used to send emergency communications it's used to send emails with or without an attachment does he uh, does he supply a trial mode yes it's free trial modes free it restricts you to like the first two gears low speed but it shows you how it works What we need is a couple of members in the club to give it a try then. Yeah, in fact, I think if you have 10 members in a club, he reduces the price per copy. The copy is just it's licensed under your call. So if I'm somewhere else and someone's shack and I want to demonstrate Vera, I can log in and say, here's my Vera and here's my registration number and it'll go because it's my call that's registered, not not a particular ham station or it's not a computer it's my call is it of, course the, of course the registrations this long so I have to have written down somewhere is it, it a one off not, payment Barry seventy dollars is the site license and that's good a for, one that's a one off is it good well I guess so good for life <laughs> my life his life I don't know yeah But it's not a physical TNC. It's not a box. So it's like buying the that you're buying the right to use his software. Uh, and uh, Winlink well, attempted to buy him out. Winlink just said, "What if we give you a million dollars? Then make it free." And he said, "No." I, I, not that it was a million dollars. It was some price. <laughs> At least that's what I heard. He doesn't. Does, he doesn't want to give it away. Does it run under Windows or? Yes. Linux? Oh, win it. Windows. Windows only. I believe so. There is a way using Linux you can run through Wine or something else. The, the the Linux guys tell me, yeah, there is a way you can use it. You do something, emulate something, emulate something else, and you can get it to work. But I forget the words they use. But you can you can get it to work under Linux. Uh, maybe by faking WinLink or something. I don't. I don't know. So it's very popular with sales, you know, with ships at sea. I mean, on the ham channels for ham purposes, not for commercial business purposes. Uh, when Puerto Rico a couple of years ago had that storm that came through and just wiped out Puerto Rico, um, they set up a couple of Windlink HF stations on the island where they lost power. They lost everything. And the Windlink stations could, could communicate from Puerto Rico back to some couple stations in on the mainland in the U.S. And then back to Puerto Rico again. <laughs> I think they were on 20 meters. Uh, it's hard to get good emergency communications within about 100 miles. It's too far for 2 meters, too close for HF. So I think they were going 80 meters, you know, 1,000 miles to somewhere in the... Southeast America, and then back to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I suppose the commercial shipping use uh, entirely satellite now. Oh yes, of course. That that's a different ball game. Uh, I, the reason I uh, mentioned that was because I I came I did a journey on a on a vessel and I uh, went up and peered through a window and blow me they got uh, a um, a uh, Amtor set, well, the commercial version of Amtor. I mean, everything is by satellite today because it's more robust. Well, I'm going to have to bow out, everybody. I've got to put the grandson up. But thank you very much, Barry. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm away here too, Barry. So thanks very much for everything. You're welcome. Enjoy talking with you guys. Um, don't forget to hit stop record, David. <laughs>